Hello everyone and welcome to today's virtual water cooler. My name is Jamie Chaffetz. Uh, we have a special show for you today. Um, we have something a little bit different than insurance. Uh, we're going to be interviewing Gwendolyn Love of Lunch Break. She's the executive director there. Um, and yeah, we're going to have a great show. We're going to talk all about Lunch Break, uh, what they do for the community. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll bring her on just as soon as, uh, let's see. Just pulling Gwen on. She... Hi, Gwen. Hi, you see me? Yeah, I see you. Can you see me? I see you, yes. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. This is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Yeah, we usually talk about insurance mostly, but this is a, a definitely a different topic for us, and it's very interesting for us to uh, talk about. So well, thank we're all you excited for, to... Uh, yeah, well, thank you for yeah. inviting me. This is very, this is, this is very nice of you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Anything to get the word out. Um, so I'll give a little intro. Um, so I hear work at insureyourcompany.com, everything insurance. Uh, Gwen works and she's the executive director of Lunch Break, um, which freely provides food, clothing, life skills and fellowship to those in need in Monmouth County and beyond. Um, you've been working there for the past, what is it, since 2012 years, <laughs> nine, I think. Oh, 12, 12 years. Okay. 12 years. Um, 12 years. That's, that's great. And then uh, the grassroots mission has been started by Norma Todd in 1983. So it's, it's a great organization. Um, so yeah, if you want to just, we can hop right into it. We got some people on the line. We have a, we can wait for a few more people to log in, but um, if we can just, you know, hop right in, like, how is lunch break? Um, you know, how are they, how is everyone doing with the pandemic? How is, how is, um, are you still providing meals? What is um, happening there? A absolutely. We never stopped uh, providing meals. And, uh, but I mean, every, everyone as well, we have, you know, we have settled into a new normal, uh, which really, you know, the main thing is that we are providing the hot meals, we're providing the groceries. You know, obviously, be before COVID, people would come into the dining room and sit and fellowship and have their coffee and eat and you know, have 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 that sense of community um, that uh, that's so important to not just you know your physical but your emotional um, your emotional needs. But you know, we cannot do that now. Uh, but we are providing food out the door. You know, uh, coffee in the morning. We never just stop doing anything. Coffee and, and bagels in the morning, or rolls, or whatever we have for the light breakfast, and then uh, for the hot meal, we, we're still providing our, our hot lunches six days a week, as we always have. Um, even the, uh, the community dinners on Friday nights were still providing, uh, the, uh, where, where people would come in and shop in our client choice pantry. They cannot come in, uh, but they're pulling the cars around where, you know, the volunteers are coming out and, uh, you know, providing the, uh, the groceries and the cars for the walkers. We actually, uh, went out and purchased a bunch of, uh, the carts the rolling carts so that they could um, not have to have the burden of not getting as much food that they needed because it was too much to, to handle. So we purchased carts and as they walk around, you know, uh, some of them don't have cars. We're still loading them up with, with the groceries. So, um, and then we, you know, we suspended during the, the, the height of the, of the COVID, we suspended a lot of the other services and then slowly they started coming back, but differently. So, for example, our life skills program, whereas they were having in-house um, Excel classes and, uh, you know, uh, resume writing classes, things like that, they transitioned very, really quickly uh, to virtual classes. Um, our cooking classes for children, you know, uh, transition to virtual classes. So there's, there's a lot of that that has been going on behind the scenes, but to still deliver uh, the quality um, uh, services that we provide. That's incredible. I actually, I was looking um, on your page, I saw there were some cooking classes that were being done and it looked like a very, um, you know, a good experience for a lot of people and something that benefits a lot of people. So I think that's great. Exactly. Um, so that brings us to our next topic, um, the COVID-19 emergency fund. I, I saw that it ended yesterday, but I wasn't sure if you guys were planning to bring it out again or what the, what the plan was for that. So when the COVID hit, and especially when everyone had to be home and people were losing their jobs and there were challenges for people to get on um, the uh, website for the uh, unemployment, things like that, um, there were some really wonderful um, foundations that stepped up. Uh, one of them was the Stone Foundation. They uh, submitted a $50,000 seed um, donation for us to start this COVID emergency fund. 
And then, you know, others came on board of uh, the New Jersey um, Pandemic Relief Fund, um, other donors, other organizations uh, gave money toward it. We have given out over $600,000 worth of funds just paying people's bills, car payments, car insurance, some of the rents, just trying to keep people, you know, ho- uh, you know, give them some hope because, you know, especially even now, um, you know, people are still not back to work or the hours have been cut and things like that. And the reason it's suspended is because, you know, we have X amount of dollars that we try to raise and then we use all that up. And then we stop for a while until we can, you know, reach out to people and say, Hey, we still, you know, need you here. So part of our, um, our fall appeal this year that we're sending out is to request if people would not mind, you know, uh, committing 10% of whatever they would send to us for our operations to go toward the COVID so we can actually keep the program going. Um, when we closed it yesterday, we had over 200 people in the queue waiting for our responses. And we had some monies that we still could use to spend out. So we, we said we must close it, try to take care of many of those 200 people as possible and hopefully, you know, there'll be some more funds coming in for the for the relief. I mean, people are, you know, we, we help and also also Ocean County. So we've been helping people. It's been, it's been over 800 families that we've helped through the COVID funds. So it's been a lot. It's been a lot. And there's, there, there, there's a lot more that's needed as well. Right. Yeah, it's I mean, it's definitely a trying time for so many with with job loss and just, you know, so many horrible things happening. Um um, I guess for a bit of a silver lining, do you see any ways the pandemic has strengthened the sense of community at lunch break? Um, and you can, you know, talk about that. You know, I, I don't know that it's strengthened the community because honestly, lunch break has always been helped and supported by the community. You know, it's a grassroots organization. It started grassroots, uh, the community supporting, and they always have, They, you know, even in the midst of the pandemic, when we know the restaurants were struggling, they were reaching out to lunch break even and helping. So the community has been amazing. They have been uh, amazing in terms of their, their, their monetary donations. They've been amazing uh, in terms of their food collections and donations. In the beginning, it was a little quiet, you know, because everybody was like in shock. Like, what do you do and how long is this going to last? And how is it going to affect me? But I think people saw that lunch break was still open, never closed our doors. We never missed a meal. And people just opened up their hearts and their, and their, their, their checkbooks and, and they, and they, and they gave and they continue to give, to give. So I, I, I think that in terms of the spirit of, of, of stepping up and being community, that's always there is just that when something like this happens, whether it's a Sandy or COVID, um, it, you, you, you see it more, but it's, it's always there because they're the ones that sustain us, uh, 365 days a, 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 a year anyway. So, um, but I, I think, you know, the COVID, you know, I think there was a lot of support because people saw their, someone in their family or a neighbor, you know, we certainly saw people struggling on TV, you know, I mean, so the, the internet is always showing how their people were, were struggling, you know, jobs, losses, hours lost, things like that. Um, so, you know, the fact that that was just an additional um, support system there that just kind of, you know, showed up in, in everybody's time of need. I thought that was pretty remarkable and it continues today. And, and I, and I think honestly with the next, um, the next issue that people are having now is the, the uh, economic issue, the finance. So this, the COVID-19 emergency response um, program needs to keep going. It's that we're going to need, people are going to need our help and that money, those, those resources for months and months to come, if not at least a year to come. Can you repeat the name of the, the of what you said? I it kind of went out right when you were talking about that. About the uh, who started it, or where do you want me to start it? Uh, the the the, um, the organization or the, the area that needs most help right now. Oh, is the COVID nineteen response um, emergency fund? Because again, you know, okay. we, you know, that's one reason why we suspended it temporarily just to see if we could raise some funds and and keep it going. It, it needs to keep going because people are still not at work, hours cuts, all those things like that. And even, you know, you know, if you're back to work, you know, you, a lot of people were got behind because the unemployment checks weren't covering everything. So, um, and then, you know, you have families now that are in turmoil because the kids are in school, but they're home. And some people can't go back to work because, you know, because of that situation. So it's a lot that people are dealing with today uh, more than, than we've ever 
could have anticipated I, I don't think people are in need and you know there's a lot of things that they can help with um what what is something people can do to help lunch break um do you accept are you accepting um volunteers now do you like obviously you're accepting donations like you know um how are you guys handling that so the volunteers is kind of tricky because you know normally we have about 30 to 40 volunteers on you know uh, on you know in, in presently on well, I should say in, in lunch break every day, six days a week, helping us, you know, prepping meals, serving meals, helping to clean up, you know, providing, you know, help at the welcome desk at the donor office, things like that. Because we've had to transition so drastically and, not, and no one is allowed in the building, we just have a core group, uh, you know, really like a skeleton crew of even paid staff and volunteers that have kind of been with us throughout the entire process. And they've committed to, you know, you know, to hide gene, you know, the healthy uh, living and you know, washing the hands and just being very, very cautious, wearing a mask and things like that, even when they're not here. So the, the that's the hard part is because, you know, we're not letting, you know, you know, so many people come in as we, we used to. At the same time, people are getting tired. You know, some of our volunteers are getting tired or they need a, a you know, a couple of days off or whatever. So I would suggest just call our volunteer coordinator, uh, let her handle that. She knows when there's times when people have to, to be away from lunch break and need a break and, uh, and she'll call in um, new volunteers. Uh, but then you have to go through a very, you know, a, a screening process to make sure that, you know, you're healthy and things like that. Um, other ways also, you know, the holidays are coming up, you know, we're still going to be providing the, the bags of, of uh, Thanksgiving um, dinners, um, as well as the Christmas dinners. And we have a, a list on our website. You can go on our website, uh, lunchbreak.org, and there'll be a list of all the food products that we're looking for to fill the bags um, for the Thanksgiving meals as well as the Christmas meals. Also, um, so, you know, we're taking those donations of food. Also, we are transitioning away from our normal um, holiday Christmas toy program where we normally, you know, handle a lot, hundreds and hundreds of toys to provide to hundreds and, and hundreds of children. This year, again, to keep everyone safe, uh, we're just having a, um, a, a gift card uh, drive. And what we're going to be doing is those families that are part of lunch break that need help, they're registering as we speak for their children. And, you know, we're going to be just giving them gift cards so they can actually do the shopping, whether it's online or in person and provide the gift th themselves. So anyone can help with, you know, providing gift cards. I think we were looking at Target and Walmart, you know, places like that, that people might be able to get some, some bargains, hopefully. Uh, so they can donate uh, th um, to lunch break for that. And, uh, and of course, always monetary, you know, as well. Um, you know, again, you know, we're looking for funds for the COVID-19 to, uh, to keep that running. But also, you know, we also need operational funds for lunch break as well. That's great. And that's uh, a lot of great ways that people can help out um, to keep, you know, lunch break going and to keep, um, you know, the holiday, you know, family drive going. So that's great. Um, uh, well, okay, so that pretty much answers most of my questions that I had. Um, if I mean, it was, it was really great having you on the show today. I don't know if you have any um, anything else that you want to talk about or anything um, you know that you want to touch on about lunch break. Well, I just I just think that you know if everyone could just try to do what they can do to keep everyone safe and so we can get out of this situation. One of the biggest and most painful part of uh, you know how we've had to transition is the fact that people cannot come into lunch break and. So many of the folks that we serve, especially in the soup kitchen, you know, there's mental illness, there's depression, there's loneliness. And, you know, lunch break is part of a, a community and we provide fellowship and friendship for those that come in. And we do have regulars that when they're coming for the grab and go hot meal, I mean, they want to come in the building. And, you know, with with things now starting to spike up a little bit, the concern is still out there that, you know, we cannot let people in. Uh, we need to be able to, to open up. And the only way we can open up is if everybody does their part. And uh, because there are people that are not as blessed as most of us that can go in a home um, or go in a car and uh, and get the type of um, entertainment that we want with our families, you know, with having TVs and things like that. There are folks that really look to a place like Lunch Break to come in to, to have that fellowship, to, to be able to have that warmth and get out of the cold. And so we need to be open. Lunch break needs to be open. So if you can't do it for anyone else, 
do it for those that are least of that don't have. And so they can have uh, a little bit of what we, we get a chance to have every day in our lives. Yeah, that's, that's great. Those are some really great words. Um, yeah. I, I think that if everyone could like, you know, we interviewed you last time you said if everyone could do their part, you know, a lot of people can be, um, you know, healed and changed. And so I think that's really great what you guys yeah. do. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But thank you for um, having so, me yeah. on. This is a great opportunity. Yeah. It's a great experience. I've never been um, on live on, on, on our Instagram and lunch break has not. And we're going to, we're going to do more of these ourselves because this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Hopefully you guys can use it and, you know, talk to different people and, and it's a, it's a really good tool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Jamie, thank you so much. Please tell your mom. I said, hello. Yes, thank you, Gwen. Yeah, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> all right. Take care. Okay. Hope take, everything is well. Take yeah, care. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.